Of women that are whoring around. Horde. Hoarders. I think you said horrors. Horde. Oh, horde. Got it. Okay. Sorry about word. that. Excuse Aaron. He's got issues today. I do. Horders. Today? Uh, yeah. Today. Is it just you or is Vinny coming? No, Vinny will not be joining us today. Okay. Fuck Vinny. <laughs> Yo, Vinny. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of my issues. I had one. You know, I'm Adam, I'm going to tell you. This is early for, for a podcast. <laughs> At least we're going to wake yet. <laughs> yeah, bro. I've been up for five hours. Yeah, not me. Not me. So, and usually I have a drink on our show. So I'm drinking right now. And it's okay. 9.05 right now. Yeah. Here, here's the problem. I want to make my martini. And this is because it's so early. And we have like olive juice that Sam got me at this great store. A whole bottle of it so I can make them dirty. It's pretty cool, right? Little did I know I was pouring wine into my <laughs> vodka this morning because I grabbed the wrong fucking bottle. So I went through the whole process of making one, and I'm going to tell you, that tasted like pure diarrhea. <laughs> no, that is so bad. So, ladies and gentlemen, please don't look, mix your vodka with <laughs> wine, especially a sweet wine, when you're making a fucking dirty martini. Oh, and it was sweet, so it wasn't even a dry martini. No, it bro. A, but it was a fuck martini. It was nasty. I was just like, okay, let's just do the show then. <laughs> so bad. You're not drinking that one, are you? No, no, I made another one. But it's sad when you have to pour out vodka. Oh. I had to waste it. Yeah, it sucks. You know. It's not that bad. Oh, how expensive things are nowadays. <laughs> All right. Well, good Welcome morning, everybody. Welcome to Around the Real. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Around the Real. So, um, Adam, I, I'm, I'm going to butcher your last name. No, just let him say it. Okay, let's let Adam say it. It's, it's Deerling. 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 Oh, it's okay. that simple. Okay, oh. that's what I was thinking it was. Okay. Yeah, I, I knew. Yeah, I knew. I, I was doing that this morning because, you know, we like to try and fuck up people's names. I mean, say people's names <laughs> respectfully. And I'm looking at him like, dear, 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 dear. No, it's just, it's, it's just, I'm trying too hard. It's Deerling. It's German. <laughs> oh, it's German. Okay, cool. Right on. Right on. Oh, so you need to add a, a, a emphasis to it. Deerling. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Well, it's very nice to have you on our show, Manny. Yeah. So thanks, thanks for taking for some time me. with us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of shit going on in the filmmaking world right now. Yeah. A lot of oh, stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. With the SAG stuff and the, Pip, the Writers Guild game. stuff, and strikes and the actors and everybody's. And how about those CEOs? How about those guys? Can we give a hand They're for the CEOs? It. They're enjoying it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking up stats for that stuff yesterday, guys. Did you know how much the average CEO makes for one of these studios, like Warner Brothers? Know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you want to do. What? Twice your last documentary, Sam, per day. Mm. <laughs> um, average year for CEO. Average year for CEO is twenty-eight million for one of these companies. That's the average, right? And Wait, this is like their yearly salary. Yeah. Or? Yeah. Okay. So let me look. I'm gonna look at my notes here. Let's just I, I wrote them down. I wrote them down. I wrote them down. Yep. Um, their salaries have kept going up over all these years. Okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, their average writers pay. Now, this doesn't sound like a bad number, right? Two hundred sixty k a year for writers. That's average. I mean, that's a good happy. one because low is sixty five. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So you know, that's we, we, in in our world, we're thinking we make a good living, right? But when you compare that to twenty eight million for your average CEO guy, which is nothing. I mean, Warner Brothers guy made like five hundred million, I think, from between two thousand eighteen and two thousand twenty two. Those guys aren't creative. They ain't doing shit. <laughs> They're creative with money. Yeah, they, they definitely know how to get that done, right? And I'm, I'm just fascinated by how greedy people are. And they always act like they're fucking broke. Like the studios say they're not going to make money. This is that. You know, they. it's just like any other company, right? They always Trickles lie. Down. Amazon does it too for their employees. That's why they pay shit for all these workers in these warehouses. And they're making bank. Bezos is flying to space. Give me a fucking break. Give me a break. That's messed up. I mean, some of them do stuff like that and then they just die. Like the one people that went down on the submarine that costed them <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> it, it, true. That happens. True. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They can take that their money and go die. If I mean, if they want to spend money on scary shit like that. 
but they get away with it and i yeah, think that's whatever. the problem so i hope the strike stuff Those does something didn't. no they didn't get away with it but you know what i'm saying i mean these this, how do you That's fight that though. stuff? How do you fight that stuff? You don't. I mean, I mean what do you do? You can't. The strike. I mean, I, if you can you, do that, but it's you, only gonna last so long, and they're they're gonna have to pay their bills eventually. Yeah, that's true, and and it's shitty because the only way to actually beat them is to hit their pocketbook. But they're deep. They've got deep pockets, <laughs> right? So how long would it take them to to feel the to pain? Run out of money. Yeah. And before a that, lot longer than it would take everyone else. Yeah, right. Actors and writers are all going to be losing their fucking houses, their careers, everything. In the meantime, to try to. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. The world's greedy. But well, let's talk about something fun, like your movies, Adam. Well, this is. Well, I was no, going to say, but with everything, wait. Uh, to make a good I, transition, I like though. <laughs> but to make a good transition for everything that we're saying. If you think about it, if this strike goes on longer, us independent filmmakers could have a shot to be seen better. That's what I'm that's saying, true. right? Yeah, the content's going to be actually flowing from us. Yeah, but how's that? That's not going to... Isn't that like kind of... Selfish? Dirty? <laughs> it's selfish as fuck. If we're thinking about our own ass. Damn, I thought you liked it dirty. <laughs> I like my martinis dirty without the sweet Apparently wine. Apparently you like them dirty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, okay. We can change the subject. It's fine. It's fine. Adam, but, by the way, I really hope you listen to a couple episodes where you jumped on our show and you're not you just being into. blindsided by the babble uh, that you get fine. from us. You're yeah, fine. <laughs> we tend to talk a lot. And, uh, well, Aaron it's, talks a, it's a, a radio show. You're supposed to talk. We're supposed to talk and bring up topics in filmmaking, Samantha. I mean, this is what we're talking about. This is what's going on in the industry right now. Maybe if everybody dropped their streaming platforms and those CEOs couldn't make money, then uh, we'd be better off, right? Mm. I don't know. I couldn't do that because I can watch my movies. I was gonna say people gotta watch our shit. I know it sucks. It's hard. It's a hard, hard thing. Anyway, all right, Adam. Hi. <laughs> this show is about our guests. This is show. this show is about no. Adam. All right. So Sam, why don't you ask the first question? Why don't we get in the interview, Brad? Well, let's. Well, does Adam anybody want to ask him what he thinks stuff. about the strike? <laughs> we babbled, but he's, we have a fucking person here who has a mind. I was a trying voice. to change the subject because Sam didn't want to talk about that topic. But Adam, please, if you have any input sure. on the strike, please, what do you think? No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm. I think it was a uh, inevitable. I think it was a long time coming. I think the streaming um, uh, model was only going to collapse at some point. Um, just because you've got consumers out there who love the idea of paying ten, twelve dollars a month for unlimited viewing of whatever they want to watch. Um, you've got you know streamers who are more than willing to provide that, but they also the consumers also want fresh content all the time. And in order to do that, you know creators like us have to be constantly creating stuff and nobody wants to pay for it so who wins in this situation you know it's not us yeah that's true you know yeah so i kind of feel like yeah they should go on strike and they should do something because even like with us like you know and this is this goes for music artists it goes for filmmakers mm -hmm. whatever you know the whole streaming model you know it it pays pennies yep you know and yeah. we learned that lesson um you know it's just part of being a filmmaker i guess you know you, you figure out how the business world works and you know we we released our soundtrack on multiple different you know audio streaming platforms and made seven dollars for yeah. a year yeah. yeah you know and it's like well i made more than that selling one cd <laughs> exactly right right so it's like you want to support artists buy the stuff you yeah, know yeah yeah, yeah buy the physical then you can always have it do you feel like I'm the, a big streaming, supporter. the yep. streaming like took um away a little bit from the pirating or no no you yeah. know here's why day one that our film was released on amazon it was already on the pirate sites yep mm -hmm. yep that's what happens yeah, we all had the time. and the i was tra i was actually tracking this one pirate site that actually had a tally of how many downloads they had mm -hmm. within like a week there was like 12 to 15,000 downloads right. of our film. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like yeah. what that would have been if someone actually just rented it yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, 
It's the digital world. That's the hard part with the That's streaming. That's the way stuff. it is. Yeah, yeah. it is. And there's it is. nothing you can do about it. There nope. really isn't, no. No, nope. I mean, so so every he makes little. a good point too about the money. I mean, for indie filmmakers, we're used to getting penny pennies, you know, for our views. We all know that. Where when we started with Amazon Back in the day with the Outrider, we 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 felt it like Jesus Christ, all those views and that's all we made. What the fuck, right. you know? And we're like, oh, two okay. million minutes viewed, and we made a <laughs> nothing. Five hundred bucks. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> and, and you know, and it and and certain platforms pay okay, but you still need a a, a shit ton still, of viewers. It, it's right? all volume. It's, it's all, all volume. volume all day long. Yep. So now these actors are feeling the same way with their residual checks from these. Um, Streaming platforms. They're not getting these residuals. They're not getting it. Yeah. No, it's not, not the same it. anymore because like someone like Netflix has, you, you, we don't even know what their model is. They don't release numbers. You, you don't know. Well, and you know? they're being well, threatened with their very... likeness being just taken and used. At <clears throat> oh yeah. The likeness they... rights. Don't even get me started on that with yeah. the AI yeah. stuff. That's crazy. I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, it's very, it's very convenient for a streamer because back in the day when you used to have, you know, box office results, you knew what the film was making. Right. Yeah. Right? right now with streaming it's it's a monthly subscription for thousands of movies how do you determine do you what a film has made on netflix mm -hmm. you can't unless right. it's ad based I mean, you, 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 it, it, it's all about like how many views and all that and, and netflix knows they have a breakdown they know exactly internally how much each project is worth that's why they cancel stuff and why they exactly renew stuff for new seasons and things like that yep. but you know they um you know, they know, but they're not telling people. And that's that's one of the big problems because there's big money being made and they're not they're not sharing it no, with the creators. Not, they're not at all. Yeah. Which is crazy. Bastards. But I mean they but that's how they do it. They buy, they pay you something and they don't have to share it. Yeah, it's funny. Too. To well, if you look at their top ten, most of the time it's movies that were made back in the day. <laughs> you know, when you, you see a fucking Stallone movie come up, Cliffhangers, a number third movie watched today, and you're like, What the fuck? It's funny. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like uh, they're they're still piggybacking off of like films from way back, and no one's getting residuals on it. Well, just when it gets popular, yeah. Yeah, it's dirty. It's dirty well, model. The family Stallone is what the hot topic is. That everybody's talking about. So everybody's going back and watching Stallone movies. Exactly. Right. Man. Well, yeah, and that's what that's kind of what the world revolves around is these waves of things that get popular, and you try to stay in it, especially mm -hmm. when you're a filmmaker or a creative in any way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You try to stay in these little waves of like. Now this is popular. Now that's popular. Yeah. Now this is popular, and it changes so often that you can't you can't predict it. You can't no. stay in it. You you just have to get lucky. Right? <laughs> yeah. Schwarzenegger <laughs> became the new it. action supervisor at Netflix, and all his movies are on Netflix. Right? So that's Imagine. how I ran into Terminator Two again, and I watched that the other day, and I'm like. Okay, you know Arnie's getting paid. <laughs> He's getting paid fat, right? What about everybody else in the movie? Well, how big of an actor do you have to be to actually see some of that money? Yeah, it's the name. in your contract. It's in, yeah. It's well, I mean, look, so look at our good, buddy, look at our good buddy Coach Rick. He got his residual check for the quarter for uh, his episode of Nash Bridges where he got a check for one penny. Mm -hmm. uh, 16 years after he made the show. Yeah. Like, wow. Not even worth a stamp. Right. <laughs> yeah. But he legal, but they legally had to send him the money, so he got it. It's so it's funny. This this is a crazy. I just set up direct deposit. Yeah. This shit's yeah. crazy, guys. It's crazy. It is. It's this industry is ridiculous. It's insane to try to figure out. I mean, you, you can't, can't really figure it out. Their their hierarchy is just. I don't know. That's why I well, like that, this indie world. I love the indie stuff. I, I love. Just, I was gonna say I I try to convince people to just go independent, do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. If you're if you're lucky to get a you know a good independent distributor, mm -hmm. go with it. You know it, it's mm -hmm. we got really lucky with our film. You know um, most people that was one big thing they struggle with yeah. is distribution. Yeah. And well, we got, you we got really rights. lucky. Yeah. Uh, yes. Correct. Yeah, and yeah, great, great, great company. Yeah. Like yeah, we used okay. to support them. One hundred percent. Yeah, Linda's a shit. Okay, oh, yeah. so why don't we why don't we get into that? Okay, fuck everything else that's going on. That's poopy. But we talk about it. So about it. Um, Adam. Okay, let's talk about your movie, dude. Because we started it last night. We didn't get to finish it, but I think um, we watched the short one. We watched the short one, and then we started the other one. The and I got I got to ask, man. Like, what's going on with your your movie, The Other Side of Darkness? What's going on? How that all happened, and how did you get that distribution for it? Well. That's a that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I like loading them, dude. <laughs> Load the fuck out of so, them. So you know, well, I'll jump ahead to the distribution because that's a that's a pretty good one. So when the film was done, you know, we 
I think because we we had listed it on IMDb, we got a few emails come to us like, hey, you know, let us know when you have your, your film completed, you know. Um, and we reached out to a few other companies just to kind of feel the market out, you know. And I'm not going to give out names or anything, but, but, you know, there was a lot of distributors that were trying to take advantage, mm -hmm. you know, of the filmmaker and they would want, you know, a bunch of money up front for yeah. stuff that was silly because it was all about getting deliverables and stuff put into certain formats. And I was like, tell I me what you need. Shit. I'll make it for you. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, and then Indie Rights came along and, and they were like, oh yeah, well, We'll, we'll do this, we'll do that. You don't have to pay anything, mm -hmm. you know, provide us the hard drive with these specs. And I was like, perfect. Boom, 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 done, send it off. It was, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. Is that um, the first time? Cheers yeah. to you. The first time you got it right? Yeah, he's badass. That's gangster <laughs> because there's a lot of specs on Indie, right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's cool. That <laughs> Their deliverables are tricky. I, I was scared the first time I was trying to, that's why I didn't do it. That's why I did Film Hub so I could correct it without <laughs> to pay more money. <laughs> That's well, gangster. You got it. You got it on the first try, though. That's uh, cool. I was like, I wasn't too worried about it. I was like, I know how to do this. <laughs> Good for you, man. Good Props. for you. That's badass. Okay. Um, so when when you were discussing things with Linda, how's that process work with you? Like when when you say that you had distributors reaching out to you, how'd you get the word out? How did they know your movie existed? To be honest, at first we didn't really like put any feelers out. It was just like people coming to us, and I I think they had found our IMDb page and saw that we had a film that was about to be released, mm -hmm. um, or at least, you know, in the post-production phase, you know, how you can change the stats, you know, status of your film. Right, right. Filming, print, whatever, whatever. Well, I think, I think there was people out there who saw that, and they, you know, they probably reach out to all of them, to be honest, that are, you know, we in that post-production phase, no and they just kind of, <laughs> they like, just kind of, they just kind of, you know, weed them out, you know, yeah. through email, like, oh, you know what, you know, let us know what you got, and people respond, and, you know, if it's something that's worthwhile, they'll still, but we did have, like, you know, four or five of them that were, like, really on us, like, hey, let's talk, you know, let's, let's, you know, let's try to make a deal, and, you know, ultimately, we, we, we spoke with Linda and, you know, we felt the most comfortable there and, yeah. um, you know, um, their their deal was was the best that we found. And they, you know, were very upfront with everything and still are about, you know, you know, how things are being done with with the project. And, it's, you know, you want statistics on your film. I email her and she sends them right over, you yeah, know, that's no, no hiding good. anything. and. Yeah um very transparent which we love because i'm i you know if i put something out on youtube like i'm watching the stats every day like every i want to know what's going day. on like yeah. you know you want to know mm -hmm. how your stuff is doing because like you know if it's starting to you know dip down in views or something you want to see if there's something you can do to bring it back up exactly. you know mm -hmm. I'm um, with you. I'm, i do the same thing buddy i'm with you you just, you just can't help it but yeah. so that was that was one thing that was kind of tough for me because i i wanted to get in there myself yeah mm -hmm. and, and check it it wasn't you had like to actually ask for it <laughs> i had to ask for it yeah. which which was weird for me um <laughs> which 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 was hard you know to, to try to you know give up a little bit of that but you know it's just part of the process you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well when it comes to distribution you do need help i mean as an indie filmmaker you can't that's so hard to do on your own it's so hard yeah. so i mean you really it, do you know need the help. there are there are avenues to do it yeah. but you got to sure. be dedicated yeah you know and it's that diy yeah. stuff yeah you do it yourself you know that's yeah. but well, i mean indie filmmaking kind of, in and of itself indie, is so i was much just work. gonna say <laughs> it's so much yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's in indie filmmaking is DIY. I mean, we yeah. shot this thing with me, Vinny, and one other crew member. Mm -hmm. You know, we had nobody. Right. I mean, we had a few people come and, you know, certain days we had certain people come and help us out, but it was like, you know, we everything we did ourselves. You know, I, I basically ran the camera. Vinny would do the lights and help with this and that. And, you know, we'd share up, you know, share holding the boom. Yeah, you know, one of the cast members yeah. wasn't on. You know, his close up wasn't here. Held the boom, you know. Yeah, man. And you know, everybody. I think yeah, everybody we, at some point did the slate board at least once. Um, <laughs> that's our life. Yep, you know, we do. <laughs> that's what we that's, do. So you're a jack of all do. trades. You do it all. Yep. Which I you was have, gonna. I was gonna give props <laughs> to the cameraman. I know we did that when we were watching. Job. I was like, dude, this is framed and fucking shot it's, beautifully. It's this is really good. good. And then I saw your name <laughs> pop up. I'm like, oh, motherfucker. 
<laughs> That's badass. Good for you, man. And the composer. I don't know who the composer. I didn't see, but I, oh, Nick Nicholas. Yep. Bro. Okay. Yeah, he's good. Oh, and the, oh yeah, my he's good. god, he's dude. Really good. And uh, did he do both films? Or are you YouTube one that's going on right now too? You're uh... no, no, okay. just uh, just the feature. That just was somebody feature. else. Okay, we yeah. had somebody else do that. The other um, side, other side of darkness score is fucking phenomenal, dude. I mean, yeah, that hit really me right yeah. away. I felt like I was being pulled back, almost to a Spielberg type movie. I mean, it's so good. It's so good. I don't know how you found that guy, but you keep him. So you don't fuck around. Don't no, fuck no. Around. We, um, I, he had a, a YouTube channel, and I um, was just browsing one day, and um, he had a, um, what was it? It was, because uh, I was looking for, like, inspiration for, for our music, and I found a cover song that he did for um, Country Roads by John Denver. And we actually used a modified rendition of that in our film. Um, and, and that was when I listened to it, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta see this guy's, what yeah. this guy's story is, see if I can contact him. Um, and it took me a while to find his contact information, but I finally found it. And I think he thought I was like a troll or something when I emailed him because he was like real, like kind of off put by it. And, you know, eventually I was like, no, no, like we wanna, you know, and then eventually he warmed up and, um, he's actually out of Germany. Okay. okay, I was just gonna say, is he from uh, the UK or is he from the States? No, no, he was from Germany. Oh, wow. um, and you know, once he warmed up, he was like, you know, all about it. Like this was great. You know, he's like, he never had that opportunity before. I think, oh, you know, awesome. to 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 do that. And so, you know, we were lucky to to work with him. And um, he's extremely talented. Like, yeah, no, a guy's the guy was great. Um, That's awesome. I, you know, I I kind of told him, I said. I said, you know, what you did was awesome for the for that demo that you had that cover. Uh, we want something along those lines for the film. Or, you know, do you do original stuff? You know, mm -hmm. and I could kind of tell from from what he had done with that piece that you know he put his own flair to it. That, it, that I knew he could write his own stuff. And you know, he was like, oh yeah, let's let's. He had all these ideas coming to me. You know, he would send me emails like, oh, check this out for. For TJ's theme and for the dark theme and all this stuff, and you know, I was like, "Oh, this is great! Like, you know, let's let's do this, this, and that." And you know, we had a lot of fun working together, trying to you know piece that all together. So. I bet, I bet. He's phenomenal. So yeah, that, that was great. Isn't it fun? It, it is. It's it's fucking great. It, isn't it fun as a filmmaker when you meet somebody you can collaborate like? like that with oh especially it's... musically because yeah. it, it just you know like your movie's going to be the shit after, <laughs> after you get the well, music in there <laughs> i know and it, and it changes everything mm -hmm. you know like like i one of my that was probably my favorite process and it it's been my favorite process in all my past projects is like when you start to you've got the film edited it's all together but it's it doesn't have its soul yet mm -hmm you know until you get the music and then once the music when you finally lay that track down on on your timeline and play it back for the first time it's like whoa it comes to life right <laughs> hair stand up that's how right? i felt yeah oh, your music everywhere comes to life. it's crazy so yeah. great dude it's well, great that's amazing good job man. i feel like that's kind of how we found ben at first right yeah. it was on youtube yeah. and he was yeah yeah so yeah. we we've found a composer ourselves that same way Yep. That was pretty good. He was from the UK. Yeah, I'd be doing he I'd be doing housework listening to this guy's music back in the day. Just put his channel on because I liked the the little his, pieces he was yeah. doing. His cues were great. They were epic as fuck, and I loved them. You know, and I'd be like doing dishes listening to him. I had no idea who he was, and then one day we got to work with him. It was that's how it happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's great, dude. Um, I was gonna ask you about your film though, like. Well, maybe we should go back. Should we? Should we get to know who Adam is, like, before we just <laughs> jump into his movie? Himself, well, I mean, we know who he is, but I mean, like, well, how, why are you a fucking filmmaker? Like, how did you get into this shit? Yeah, Adam. How oh did you... boy. Uh, you know what I mean? Is like, that another loaded question? I mean, we all have we all have our stories, and we all were probably oh, sure, interested sure. in making movies when we were little and doing all that shit. We've all done that, but like, why the fuck? I think it kind of boils down to this one. I was in eighth grade. Well, it was before that, really, but I think it really started back in eighth grade. I I, I was getting really horrible grades in, in school, and I, I, I 
my you know my parents grounded me for like two months or something like that and I couldn't watch TV I couldn't watch movies I couldn't do anything the only thing that they would let me do was they let me borrow the camcorder and yeah. go go play with that and so that's what happened I just went out with the neighbor kids and I was really big into Indiana Jones at the time so like you know we went back out in the woods my, my buddy had a an Indiana Jones like hat and you know he would we would just do random stuff in the backyard and in the woods and you know we, we, we had a lot of fun doing it and you know we'd make like we'd go out in the after, after school and made like a full five minute short and every day we'd do another one and we'd always we'd improve it every time and you know we'd, we'd, we'd get our his older brother to drive the car so that we could have like a little chase scene and you know <laughs> awesome. and you know it was cheesy and awful but it you know it, it was, was fun great. to do Fun. Yeah, and then it just kind of, you know, snowballed from there. And then I, you know, um, I was always the one in school whenever there was a project that, you know, could be a video. Everyone always looked at me and wanted to work with me on, you know, making a project, you know, because they knew that I had done stuff in uh, other classes. And so we'd always, you know, I'd always get to do those projects. And then, um, you know, after high school I you know moved to LA um and went to film school um oh, you did you yeah. went to film school yeah wow. yeah I, was, I went to the Los Angeles film school uh in 2005 wow. okay. um and I lived out there for I think I lived out there for three or four years and then it just what made you move away from there from California mm -hmm. um it was too damn expensive California, <laughs> you know, like, California. like my rent kept going up and up and up. And I was just like, I, I was, I was working at the time and I was doing the nine to five job and all my buddies, you know, they were working, you know, PA positions on all these different projects. And I never, I, I never really saw anybody. I basically went to work, came home, ate mm -hmm. and on the weekends I'd go to the movies or I'd go to Best Buy and come home and like, I just, you know, Everybody I knew, I, I just didn't see, you know, so it was like kind of boring and lonely. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to move back and, you know, see what I can do there. And I ended up coming back and my brother's best friend was getting married and he was like, hey, you got a camera? I was like, yeah, so you want to come film it? And I was like, ah, sure. And so I did that. He liked it. And his sister got was getting married a few months later. She wanted me to do the video and I was like okay fine and she really liked it and then other people started liking it and then next thing you know 15 late 15 years later I'm still doing weddings and Good. you know yeah um, but that's allowed me to buy my own equipment mm -hmm. for the purposes of oh this would be cool to I do I need this for a wedding no but it would be cool to use it for a movie one day yeah so let's get this you know yeah. right, right and I use it for weddings too of course but you know um, and that way you can write it off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I do weddings myself, but I bartend them. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I used to film. That's a lot. That's, 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 yeah, that's a little different angle. Yeah. A lot of different angle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's a funny story, Adam, because it's very similar to mine. Very much so. Yeah. Even down to fucking Indiana Jones. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. I remember playing that all by myself with my mom's cam corner in the backyard in the same way. And then I, I catch myself in the reflection of my backyard, like my mom's bedroom window. And I'm like, oh, but I'm brown. I don't look like Indiana Jones. Oh. <laughs> it used to hurt my feelings when I was a kid. I was so mad that I wasn't white. Mm. Like I wanted to be white so bad just to play the part right because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I was so mad. But it was the same thing. I was so inspired by the same stuff. And we had a, uh, a rent -a center across the street from our house. And my mom would sometimes rent the camera for like the weekend. Oh, nice. The camcorder. And then I'd get it and I'd just walk around the house filming shit, film all yeah. kinds of stupid stuff. I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah. I didn't edit anything because I didn't know that was even possible. I was a fucking kid, but whatever <laughs> I shot was our movie. And it was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, really back, cool. Back, back then for us, it was like, you know, we recorded onto like tapes and then we had our VCR that we had to record it to the vcr and you know you you'd hit pause play on the you know on the vcr to get the right takes you wanted and See, then you know i i had like a i even got tricky i had like a portable cd player mm -hmm. 
that that I plugged into you know the VCR and then the, the audio from the camera and the vid, and I mixed them right there as I was recording them into the, as into the tape and <laughs> you know that was before digital editing yeah you know That's at least it was be. before it was affordable for you know somebody some kid to have you know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was fun. My dad had a two VCR setup, but I had no idea I could utilize it to edit movies, or I would have. I had no idea, yeah. right? But the reason he had it was because we would go rent a movie, and yep, he, he would exactly fucking you <laughs> dub it over to his own, so we could have a collection of movies in it. And it worked movies. for a long I had time. That did that. They had stacks of tape. <laughs> yeah, bro. They're like, was oh, you, oh, same? I got this. This just came out. You want to watch it? Exactly, like, oh, sure. dude. Yeah. Here's *Romancing <laughs> the Stone*. You want to watch it? It's badass. I just yep. got it. Yep. Was yep. that the same thing as like tape tapes where you had to tape over the piece so you could record over the tape? Yeah, they had the little plastic things yeah, that you, and you had to like you pop out for of, for you know. It out or, yeah. See, you guys are smarter than I am with editing. I never did that. <laughs> I had no idea you could even do that. To this well, day, I didn't know. Well, you, you had to put the yeah. tape over it so yeah. you could record over it. You had it. to put the tape over it. You know? <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't know you could uh, do otherwise that. Otherwise, it was otherwise uh -huh. it was uh, what did they? It was locked. You yeah. could record it. Yep. You know. That so was their way of locking stuff. Yeah, it was no, a mechanism that. That way, that way, you didn't accidentally record over your like right. your, your, your Star Wars VHS <laughs> yeah. tape back in that's the you know that you bought from the store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. crazy stuff. You had to use the tape, and you had to tape over the hole. And then, yeah, yeah. Cassette oh tapes yeah, the little audio pop thing too. on the top. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Okay, never. Mind. I got it. I got it. I got it. I remember. If I had one <laughs> handy, I would show you. Yeah, I do remember that now. I remember that now. The tape. I forgot. Okay. Okay. I thought you guys were actually talking about like the the recording film inside the fucking. Oh no! I was like, no, "What no, are you no, guys no. doing?" Just in the show. No, just yeah. the tabs on the back. The tabs yeah, on the, the top. Tabs. Okay, I remember those. Tape over them. Well, I forgot about them, but I remember <laughs> now. That's crazy. You used to pop them out if you were done with it, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. I remember. Okay. Then you can record over it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Jesus Christ, we've come a long way. My <laughs> lord, that's amazing. Imagine how clever we were to figure out that we could do that. Yeah, though. you guys had I it. I mean. I didn't do shit. <laughs> well, my, my VCR back then was a was a stereo VCR, so I had left and right channel. So what I did was oh, cool. the audio from the camera went in to the left channel, so I had the voices come out of the left and the music come out of the right. That's Perfect. Then that, but then but but then that drove me crazy because like some VCRs my buddies had were mono and it wouldn't have like the music or something wouldn't come through. Oh yeah. So I had to figure out how to way to mix it. So I, I I bought this. It was at Best Buy. It was like ten fifteen dollars. It was like a little audio mixer thing. I still have it wow, in the basement. Wow, that's cool. And like you, you could you could put, you know, there would be a slider for music. There'd be a slider from a microphone and auxiliary, and you could little audio, you know, mm -hmm. so cool. faders. You could you could. You know, bring up the music, bring down the music, so and then awesome. everything was mixed together. Oh, that was like that. That was like the best thing ever. I oh, love that. Oh, that's so yeah. good, man. That's wow, awesome. wow. The nostalgia. I fucking yeah. love this. See the stories that you get. Everybody's history is. It's I don't crazy. know. It, it it's so similar, but yet always it's just a tad different. But we all were like doing the same shit at one time, trying to figure out stuff that right. we yeah, didn't even know we were trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah so it's cool. great. It's great. And then you end up making a big movie like you did with Other <laughs> Side of Darkness. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, we didn't finish it yet. But buddy, it's really fucking solid movie. You did a great job making this me. movie, dude. Yeah, it's it's score, really, it's really, great. really good. Um, it's got some good actors. Yeah, really cinematography is beautiful. Like I said, you, you shot the shit out of it. It looks great. You know, and I'm not going to say that I don't shoot the shit out of stuff. I do. I love hey, that. you get to practice shooting the shit out of something today. I know. I'm going to film today. I, I love grabbing a camera. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. But I was <laughs> I was super happy to see your name up there as cinematographer and DP. I, was, I mean, that's great. It's just. Oh, awesome. I was I wasn't technically the DP. That was Vinny, my producing partner. He, oh, on he, the other side, you did, did. You shot this the 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 big yes. one. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes, thank you. So 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 on that one, I was even less of a crew. Uh, it was me. <laughs> like I, I, I basically set up a stand for the microphone and held the camera, set up the lights, did everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was not fun. Um, but on this, on the on the other side of darkness, you know, it was, um, you know, I had Vinny who helped produce the film. Um, and also, you know, did, you know, the, the cinematography. So like he did, we kind of split roles. We kind of like, you know, shared a lot of stuff. So like he did like, uh, lighting setups and like, yeah. oh, we're going to have light coming in from this direction. He, you know, we're going to block out this window, you know, we're going to, 
Like, okay, Adam, where you want to shoot from? I don't want to be like in this angle shooting this way. Okay, we're going to do set up the lights here. We're going to have the candle in the background here and do all that. And then, you know, basically, you know, I, I, as directing it, I would hold the camera. I would, I would operate. I would, you know, be like, okay, this is where the actors are going to stand. I want them to come in and do this. And we're going to have the camera. We're going to move it to here, you know, all that. Um, you know, gimbal, like, you know, mostly it comes from my experience from doing weddings. You're like, right. I just, you know, you just develop an instinct for things. And so, like, you know, I, I you know, gimbal shots, you know, I, I, you know, all that stuff, you know, hanging out of a car window, you know, getting shots down a freeway at 55 miles an hour, you know, that's me. Yeah. Um, you know, the drone stuff, you know, I flew all that. Beautiful. Great um, shots, too. Beautiful drone Thank stuff. You. Amazing, yeah. man. Yep. So basically, Vinny yeah. is Chuck. Yeah, 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 and he's not here, which is normal. I know, which totally is like, I'm we're getting Chuck. Him. I'm just kidding. We're missing him. I know. No, I'd, I would have loved to meet him. Yeah, he did, he did great work. He's a great guy. He's, yeah. So Chuck does the same he, thing he loved for Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. He produces everything. Aaron, basically, mm -hmm. he's Aaron's sidekick. Make a movie. Yeah. No, it's well. His his big thing was like scheduling. Like he was like he's like a scheduling nerd. Okay. And so like, he, he it, it, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do it. You know, the movie just wouldn't have been able to happen without the with that because like the way we had to shoot things. I don't know if you knew this or not, but like we shot it in the summer of 2020. Oh, and okay. you know, COVID. if you know if you know your history, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was not that was a kind of an interesting year yes, yeah it was um so like you know with people's schedules and you know who could be on set at, at what time you know we had to like we did what we what we felt was safe you know at the time <laughs> okay <laughs> and you know at the time you're kind of just like you know you want to make the movie but you also want to make people comfortable right. and be respectful mm -hmm. and all that so yeah. You know, we talked with everybody and, you know, we took the precautions needed for everybody. But, you know, the point was, is, you know, nobody was doing anything that summer. Everybody was bored. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we just decided, you know, let's go make this movie. You know, a lot of places were closed down, but the places that weren't closed down were outdoor spaces. So, mm -hmm. you know, what did we do? Well, we were making a movie and a lot of it takes place outdoors, course, you know. Yeah. Um, so... We got really lucky with with the people that you know were willing to to be in the movie and work with us and but the challenge of that was is people's we had to work around people's schedules and availabilities and so we shot yeah. you know i think it was it was between 22 and 25 days total okay but but it was spread out over the course of like four or five months right. oh, and we wow. started shoot, we started shooting in july and we ended in like mid-november um so it was, it was a little rough because when we started filming, we didn't have a lot of the locations. In fact, we didn't even have some of the, the cast mm -hmm. all locked in. Some of the major cast hadn't been cast yet, but you know we had, you know, people that were ready to go, and we started filming and just started shooting around what we had, and you know, ended up making it work. But man, there were some times where we just. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, if it was going, we were going to finish. I thought for sure some of our, you know, people would just walk, you know, right. like, you know, they're, they're done. Like we, we can't keep going like this and like, you know, and I was pretty adamant about like, you know, not filming more than eight hours a day. Good like, you. you know, that was important to me. Like, you know, I didn't want to uh, take advantage of people. I felt, I feel like, you know, being on those sets for 10, 12, 14 hours is, is, Ridiculous. not cool yeah. you know and um i knew that we could do it you know film what we needed to film in an eight hour time slot you know um, i know it was possible like me and Vinny, we had a plan we went in we knew what we needed to shoot that day i had you know he had his lighting diagrams i had my shot lists and my floor plans all laid out and as soon as we walked in the space i was like okay you're going to be here. You're going to walk to here. Camera's going to be here. We're going to do this. Okay, go, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's how we did it, you know? That's beautiful. That's how you get it done, bro. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Did, did a lot of, it, during during that time frame, that going back in our history, I, yeah. I you know, we, we all respect everybody's choices and what they do, right? But 
the, when we were doing stuff, because we were shooting a documentary at that time, no one, no one really cared. Nobody, Nobody cared. It we bring depends, it up, like, and, and most people were like, "I don't give a fuck. Let's just do it." <laughs> it, de- it depends on it depends on where you are geographically. I think at that time, if you were like in LA or New York, there were like there was a lot more paranoia. I can understand. Well, there's a lot more people. Yeah. You know? But yeah. there's much den- more densely populated. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. You know, around here, um, it was a mixed bag. You know, there was a lot of people that were, you know, shut-ins mm-hmm. um, and, and, and didn't want to breathe the outside air, you know? There were people that um, didn't care, you know? Yeah. Um, and to be honest, like, for us, it was like, you know... I understood what was going on. I knew the severity of the situation, but I also knew that, you know, um, the precautions to take, you know, and I knew that you could still um, make something happen and be respectful and, and, and all that. So I don't know. We, um, you know, we, we weren't able to cast um, some people because of, their inhibitions, their 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 res- reservations about it, mm-hmm. you know, and we respected that. We we're like, yeah. that's totally cool. Like, we get it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That happened with us as yeah. well. We were trying to make we we're making say goodbye at the time, and we ended up having to put it on hold. There was a lot of people that didn't want to participate. So yeah, that yeah. that were you know main and you know actors. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. or they yeah. met you know. We couldn't, and we weren't going to recast them. We had already spent so much time casting everybody. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, that's we had where to the make, podcast we started. Had, <laughs> we had to unfortunately make some some casting changes that that you know in the end worked out just fine. But you know, I I was sorry to have had to make them. You know, where we you know there were certain people that were cast that because of COVID and all the limitations, we 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 just had to change things up, and you know. Um, the the one um, character in the film, the grandpa, you know, we had a bunch of guys, older gentlemen, ca- um, submit for it. But then, as they, you know, we got to talking with them, and they were, you know, getting more and more concerned about the situation. They, you know, most of them, they all kind of said, you know, politely said that, hey, look, you know, we we can't, unfortunately, you can't blame be a part them. of this right yeah. now, yeah. Right. you know. And I totally understood that. Yeah. And but to be honest, it all worked out, and it was all meant to be because <laughs> Scott, the guy that mm-hmm. um, we did end up casting, um, we well, let me back up a little bit. We lost a location um, that um, the grandpa's house. We didn't have it when we started filming, and we had a spot um, picked out, but we only could use it for five days in a row. And we knew we needed it for more than that. We, we thought we could do it. And then we really sat down and looked at it. And it was like, there's no way mm-hmm. we're going to be able to do this. Like, we're all going to be- kill ourselves. Right. So we ended up canceling with that location. And then we had nothing. I had to find something else. Well, Scott, on, our, on his first day of shooting, was asking us where we're going to film, you know, the location of his house. I said, well, we don't have anything. And he's like, well, what about my house? And I was like, well, you know, he's like, well, I have a barn. You know you can use but you know i don't know about the house i don't know if it's gonna if it would work for you and i was like well send me some pictures he sent pictures and i was like dude if your wife will be cool with us coming up there <laughs> yeah like you know let you know we would love it and he was him and his family were like yeah please you know it's one of those things that works out the way it's supposed to work. And, exactly. it always, and it always and comes down we, to the was, wife saying yes every well, goddamn time <laughs> Yes. I mean, I guess well, unless, that's, unless you're in a third world country, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, that's because I knew he would. I knew he would say yes. Yeah, exactly. You know? right. But I also knew that you know his wife might have something to say yep. on the contrary. So yeah, they don't fuck around. Make sure. But uh, but she was. They were so cool. She she like well, she had like cool. a fruit Aaron. basket out for us every day we come in. Oh, you that's know? so sweet. And she, they were. She was so sweet, and she she like you know I would pull up you know, before everybody would get there and she would, she would be like, Oh, I'm leaving. I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll leave for the day. And she would always like come out and, you know, and and say hi and, you know, go to work and, and, you know, 
and, That's awesome. and, and, you know, be super kind of like, you don't have to leave. Like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. you can hang out. Yeah. She's like, oh, no, you know. And then what the reality was, once you guys did your thing, she was super nice to you. But then when you guys were gone, she was bitching him out <laughs> every fucking night. She was telling him, God damn it. Look, look, what, the shit's all over the place. They didn't even close this door. You know, <laughs> they didn't close the door. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was I was pretty, pretty adamant about, like, you know, putting everything back before we I was, you know, me and Vinny were always the last to leave. You know, I made sure that, you know, we cleaned it up, put the chairs back, you know, if there was, you know, water bottles out, that's one of my big pet peeves is the water bottles. Yeah. You know, bottled water, like people don't drink them all. They leave them all over the place. Yeah, and you don't know who's is who. No, no. And I'm just like, this is ridiculous. No, yeah. my, my bitches were just about the scratches in the hardwood floor, the dents in my car, you know. Oh, yeah. things sorry about, like sorry. that. Or, you I'm know, the sorry. line well, in the sorry, cheese. Sorry. Well, stuff. Sorry, okay, well, here, I, I had sorry, a wife who used to do the same thing. She would complain about, you know, using the house and the inconvenience of doing everything here. And now I have a really nice house. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> a little bit. It's not too soon. It's just fun. I'm going to call that uncomfortable silence. More uncomfortable laughter. right now. Uncomfortable laughter. It's, it's quiet here. Aside from the dog that keeps coming in once in a while and trying to disturb me a little bit, it's kind of it's kind of peaceful. Our dog's not here today. Quiet. Did you notice that? No, Leo? Well, well, that just depends on whether or not you open the door. So I, I never know if Leo's there or not. But No Leo at our um, house, no wife at yours, oh, I guess. <laughs> Well, and here comes the, and here comes my old bitch, not uh, Duchess, my oldest dog. We got it, yeah, yeah. Not, not to confuse anything. Yeah, I hi Duchess. She's um, like, I made, I made it up the stairs. I might not make it down. <laughs> She's old as shit. <laughs> All right, let's see. Our daughter's fourteen, and she was a puppy when our daughter was born, basically. So yeah, yeah. Um, She's an old dog. Yeah. Pretty old. She's an old dog. That's funny, Chuck. I'm sorry. That was a good one. That was no, really funny. I, I don't know if it's good or not. But it it's is really funny. funny. It's really funny. <laughs> um, Adam, okay. So with with your film, before you pitch it, because I want the audience to know what your movie's about and why you made it, um, I'm going to ask you personally. Like, what what is more fun for you on set as as a filmmaker? Do you, do you like the directing aspect more? Do you like the filming process more? Like having that camera in your hand, or is it all of it? And if you say all of it, I completely understand. But I know there's one thing you like more than the rest. To be honest, to me, the directing part and the camera part are one and the same to me. Mm -hmm. Because, like, that is where the movie goes. And that's where, like, your frame is. And so, like, I just, I'm just so, like, I don't know, in tune with the camera. And, and it's all instinct by now because I just you know grab a camera and i just you know i know where the settings are i know how to manipulate it if i have to on the fly like i can just do that and grab you know grab and shoot and 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 you know kind of direct people where to be and you know hey this wasn't quite right you know try it again let's you know that kind of thing and um so like to me those are kind of one and the same and i i i, I really enjoy that um i there's a lot of things I don't like, like lighting. That's not for me. Okay. Like, I, I I can do it, um, but I know there's like Vinny's way better at it, way more knowledgeable with mm -hmm. it than I am. Like down to like, you know, the the color temperatures of the bulbs and you know the 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 wattages and this you know knowing like how much amps you're pulling on a circuit before you know oh we can't add another light to this one because we're only on 15 amps mm -hmm. we're gonna pop it you know you know and to know all that stuff just by looking at it right you know <clears throat> like like i don't oh, i don't know. know all that stuff like i don't to be honest i could do it and i have done it but when you fill your brain with so many of those technical things you lose sight of the creative side of the filmmaking the and i you know yeah. and i i feel like that's why you've got all these different crew positions because you as a filmmaker need to focus on your task yeah. let the other people do their work on do theirs you know yeah. people who know what they're doing and do you ever if act? something isn't what's that do you ever act in your movies oh god no oh see aaron no. <laughs> aaron i try to get him to not act because i try to get him to just be the <laughs> director because he's so good but he always wants to act. Yeah, because I he does I gotta, everything. He does everything. He acts. I, he does the cameraman. He does the sound. He does the everything. 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm <laughs> like him like, with lights. That's why I always give it to like Chuck or Ryan <laughs> or Tyler. I give it to those guys to do lights because they're great. But when I have to, I have to. I have to figure it out. But yeah. I, I don't. I don't feel comfortable with lighting either. But acting. It's not that you're not a good actor. No, it's just no. That you're such a better director. I just know. Direct. People. But I. But I want to become a solid actor in the same way I feel like <laughs> I want to become a solid director or editor. It's 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 right up there with those two. You know, I like I love directing. But I like I like sh- I like pulling a fucking focus with a camera. Like it makes me feel like the shit. So that almost that almost trumps fucking. No, I said Trump. It fucking trumps. You know, it's still word. the director yeah, aspect of it. But then I get know. into editing and post, and then I'm like, oh fuck, I love that more than all of it. I love taking the footage and putting the pieces together. You know that. But acting is right there with me, Sam. I can I do all of it. I know. Wait, it's because you can't have some. I mean, you can't not be the cool guy. Well, I have in to. I, I, I have to. <laughs> I want to play it because be it's cool fun. Guy. I've been doing it since Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> since I was a kid, I want to play a part like that. It's fun. It's just fun. I play parts like that. You, it's fun. You want you want to know a fun fact? Since Please. you mentioned yeah, you like pulling focus, so because we didn't have enough crew members. And uh, we, we, we pretty much autofocused the whole thing. Oh, you did? Which, which was like a big pet peeve and no-no for me. Right. But we did because worked, the, no, because the know. Sony's autofocus mechanism is so good. Yeah. Like it pulls its own focus. Yeah. It does a great and, job. And there was only a couple of moments and some of them, you know, slipped into the movie where like the focus would slip. And like no, you really only notice it when it's on a big screen. But like... I always hated those little moments when it did that, but like we did what we had to do, especially when it was on the gimbal. Yeah, you had the you use the autofocus, and yeah. but yeah, I would have loved to have had somebody who was good at, you know, pulling focus. But yeah. we we again we didn't have. <laughs> well, great job though, because I yeah. didn't see any. any so far, we I haven't. Mean, I would have no, never no, no, known. No, 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 no. I would have no. never known. I agree. That's I one agree. of that's that's one of the things where like you have to know the limitations of your camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. you avoid certain situations that you know are going to trick up the autofocus. Yeah. If you're if you're forced to use it. Yeah. I love using the gimbal when we're shooting stuff, but it pisses me off because we don't have that focus puller on the gimbal set up mm. to do it right. So I have yeah. to still kind of try to do it with the and gimbal, you can't. and you it can't sucks because it, it it all. Yeah. So then I go handheld. The mechanism. I, yep. I go yeah. straight handheld, and then I'll stabilize everything in post. Fuck it. <laughs> That's yeah. what I do. That's what I do. Um. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the the movie itself? Like, what is your pitch here to this audience that listens to us to get them to go and watch your fucking movie? And where can they watch it? Yeah. All right. So the movie is kind of there, there's kind of two major things going on in the movie. There's and they kind of the stories kind of converge at, at one point. So the movie takes place during a scenario, a blackout scenario that's that's spreading across the country. Um, while that's happening, we have a young girl who's turning 16, who lives in foster care, who not living in the greatest of situations, yeah, she's wants not. to wants to get out of her situation and is and is perhaps a little too young to do so uh, legally. So she gets um, a gift on her 16th birthday, uh, a key to a storage locker that contains um, a Jeep that that once belonged to her her birth mother. Well, she doesn't know that yet, but she finds out. And she wants to find out who left her the vehicle. So she looks up the registration, she sees that it's got her name, but it's an address in West Virginia. So she wants to find out who who did it. So she goes and she drive, makes a drive with her friends down to West Virginia and um, meets her grandfather. And you know, then she kind of gets um, intertwined into this whole um, blackout scenario. Um, and yeah, so she goes on this journey um, to uh, find herself and. Uh, Bites off a little bit more than she could chew, <laughs> um, but you know, in the end, she you know pulls through and um, 
you know, I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, don't give too much away. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> you didn't say describe this. It's, good. it's good. It's good. <laughs> no, because I think we made it to about 45 minutes in. I think she she's already met Grandpa. Mm -hmm. um, they were driving. They were going somewhere. I can't remember where they're going because we got to backtrack. Do was... I where they're going to meet Grandpa? No, they met Grandpa, but they were in the car driving somewhere. Oh, they were on that off road. Oh Bumper. yeah, yeah. They're, that's that's how I think. Yeah, yeah. We we stopped right around there last night, so I'm gonna okay. try to finish it this weekend, buddy. The only, but, well, the only thing anymore. that you left okay. out yeah. that I would add to that is the best friend is super important in that story too. Like, yeah, she's best dope. Friend, like she's gangster. Yeah, she's badass. She doesn't fuck around. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, she she's she's the voice of reason, and you'll see that mm -hmm. more and more and more. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. And I I actually when I wrote the character, she was just kind of like this sidekick character, but. When Olivia came and brought the character to life, like I had this newfound respect for this character that she just became, she was so much more important than I realized she was. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? Makes sense. Um, I get Because that. she did such a wonderful job she betraying her. Right, yeah. And, and like, yeah, it's like, and you'll see later on, like she, you know, she, she tries to keep, you know, TJ on the on the on the straight path, but you know, she, you know TJ wants to do her own thing, and you know, uh, so you'll you'll see more of that, and you get to appreciate it. But it's their, their relationship, and 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 um, you know, Hannah's relationship with the grandpas is 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 is, is fun to see. <laughs> I bet. What what, what, in, what inspired you to write this? Did you write this story? I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What inspired the story then? Well. Um, so it's kind of funny. It all kind of started. So after we did the, 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 the Creature Star Kills short film, my buddy who was helping produce that, you know, he was like, oh, let's make another movie. I was like, okay, cool. Let's, let's, what should we make? And he's like, well, he's really into cars and stuff. He's like, can we do something with cars? And I was like, I was like, oh, that could be kind of fun. Like, you know, but I was like, I can't do Fast and Furious. <laughs> like, like, there's just no way, you know? And I was like, and I was like, well, how about a, you know, how about instead of like, you know, a sports car or something like that, what if we did like a, you know, like a Jeep, something with, with a Jeep? And he's like, oh, that could be cool. And so I started coming up with different ideas of what, what could I do with this? And, you know, it's, you know, what does a Jeep mean to me? And it's like, well, it's all about adventure, you know, being able to go places and see the world and go places that most people can't go. And, um, you know, it's not about speed. It's about, you know, you know, a, a journey and, and exploring and all that. Um, and so like, you know, I try to meld that with, with another idea that I had um, where like, um, you know, I, I really love like, uh, like disaster movies and stuff like that. And the, the kind of scenarios that come up where like you see how people react and under certain like end of situations. World yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. And you know, I, I, you, you see all the different things that come out of people, the yeah. good, the bad, whatever. Right. Absolutely. And so I, 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 that, that sort of like, um, I don't know that, that, that caveman instincts that come out of people, you know, like, you know, when, when, when the system fails mm -hmm. and so much of that, like we just could never touch because of the budget, you know, right. mm -hmm. but I wanted to incorporate that somehow into this. So that's how I kind of like, you know, melded the two together um, by, you know, having this kind of adventure story with this, with these young kids, you know, and, and, you know, put them into this situation where, you know, they're living in this world where all of a sudden, you know, they don't have cell phones, you know, they're forced to get out mm -hmm. and, 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 and see the world in a way that they've never experienced before, you know, um, cause I mean, that's, that's kind of how our childhood was, right? Yeah, you know, we didn't have yeah. cell phones. We, no. you know, we knew that you know, when the sun reached a certain point in the sky that we had to come home. Go, go home, yeah. When the, you when know? the street lights, lights came, came on. on. When the street lights street came lights on. Street lights came on. <laughs> right, Get if you have street lights, right, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. You, know, the, you know, kids nowadays, they don't, they don't have that freedom. Well, they don't go no. outside. <laughs> and, we needed, and we needed encyclopedias, which were great. Back well, Remember? Those right, awesome. those giant yeah. things, yeah. I was just actually making fun of my parents. They're, that encyclopedia that I grew up on, yeah. 38 fucking years ago is still sitting in the dining the, the, the formal the formal <gasps> dining it's, it's room. Part of the I'm decor. coming over to It's your beautiful. Parents, I'd love to look at them. Yeah, that'd be the great. The dinosaurs are jacked. And you had to order them. Remember the TV? It was to be a, like a little infomercial of you get one letter at a time. Yeah, I mean, that was one yeah. way to get them. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know another way. Britannica, Britannica. Yeah, it's like Encyclopedia Britannica. It's the burgundy set. Yeah, beautiful. 
gangster. Yeah, it's badass. And I want to read them, so I'm coming over. Tell your mom I'm coming over. <laughs> and tell her to cook, too. That would be good. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, that would be just an extra bonus. Oh, man. Okay, that that's... um. Your, your your movie's fantastic. It is. It's great. Adam, I'm, it's I'm, great. I'm, I'm, we, we were enjoying the shit out of it. It just got too late. We can't fucking watch everything. We're <laughs> so, old, kind of. Yeah, it takes yeah. a minute to get everything done. But, um, you know, super impressive work yeah. on this film. You yeah. did great. Mm-hmm. You did a great job. Your crew, your cast, everybody did. Ma- it, it's it's fantastic. It looks great. Yeah, it, it sounds does. great. Mm-hmm. It's entertaining. It, it captured the, it captured us. We were watching. We were like, holy oh, shit, yeah. this is actually good. And trust me, Adam, <laughs> we watch actually everybody's stuff we if we can. We watch everyone's stuff. Yeah. And, <laughs> and not all of it, we can say that. <laughs> okay. That is true. That's all I'm saying. I, That's I all understand. I'm saying. Yeah. That's all you I, need to say. And not hating you, on you, anybody's you, work. No. You always, you always check out your competition and i'll just leave it at that well that Uh, but it's always a process you know everyone starts somewhere and we started somewhere too yeah yeah when aaron's first movie there's no sound yeah you can't (laughs) there's no sound yeah yeah yeah. it's called silent shadows yeah we we, we don't know what the fuck we're doing but you you learn but you learn and you grow and that's the important thing yeah but it's yours was really You've grown a it's lot, a fucking obviously, movie. because... No, yeah. yeah, you made a fucking movie. You like, did. it is a movie. Legit, legit. Yeah, like, you wouldn't tell any difference between that and something that actually had a shit ton of money in it, right? <laughs> Visually, <laughs> seriously, buddy. Seriously, it's 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 it looks and sounds wonderful. It's a great it movie, dude. And Which it's got huge. a really cool premise. Yeah. It starts out great. The characters you actually give a shit about. I love yeah. the actress. She does a great job playing the 16-year-old. She's great. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she looks like a star. And the score helps her even elevate more. When you hear the music with her, you're like, dude, I'm... I'm watching an old school movie like this feels like something i watched back in the late 90s like really it feels that way it's like, it's great it grabs you the cinematography yeah. is great the score is great it's really good you should be fucking proud of you yourself, should man. be proud of yourself okay. <laughs> and the actress is the same one in the short right she right? is yeah. Yeah. yeah i met I her so. she was 19 when she did that um and we were so impressed with how she did that and, mm-hmm. and just the bravery that she had you know because when we shot that it's funny we actually legit went down to west virginia to the cabin that was my buddy's family's place and we literally no plumbing no electricity Mm -hmm. forget cell service right and we were down there for like two and a half days and you know she was i mean she was so brave to to come down on this camping trip basically i believe i know what you, you know yeah. w- w- not knowing any of us right you know sure. yeah. and thank and thank goodness you know my buddy's wife came along good because you know i was i wanted to make sure she felt comfortable yeah you like know? hey you're the only um, girl here hi how you doing come up to this dark cabin well, in the woods with us please <laughs> right yeah like how how many times has that gone wrong you know <laughs> Uh, I don't remember the part of the scene where I was being tied up. <laughs> How gangster is she, though, to go even not knowing? Oh, she's a badass. I know. I yeah. Know. Great she's actress. Great. I don't even want to talk about that short uh, that he's got on YouTube because, you know, Bear, Bigfoot scares me. I fucking can't. Yeah, it scares I can't. the crap. I've had a fucking nightmares of Bigfoot since I was a kid, dude. It's fuck that and you made it exactly how i would visualize it you know you hear bigfoot <laughs> screaming in the woods and shit and i'm like oh my god this is <laughs> i hate i hate bigfoot i fucking hate bigfoot that's why i don't go in the woods i fucking hate it i hate it <laughs> bigfoot can kiss my ass and that's why zappy always pisses me off looking for fucking bigfoot I was up just here about to say yeah you know, we have a guy who's up here who does like writes about local lore about like you know the scary stuff in our area there's a and lot of it he's been on the show here. yeah we actually followed him out one day and i told the story in the show bro i'm not going to say it again however you know he he hunts for bigfoot and i'm like dude you're a fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> if you find bigfoot don't call Jacob, uh, no, no 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 i call anybody hunting for bigfoot an idiot because you don't know how bigfoot's gonna be it might not be harry and henderson's it may not be like <laughs> right. that this it could be, be that fucking thing that's grabbing people's fucking throats and shit out there get out of my fucking woods you know what i mean i have no idea i don't want to fuck with bigfoot he didn't like that cabin there he hated it there's humans that are scarier <laughs> than this sound of i don't know no no i can deal with people bigfoot oh i can't do it no that's intimidating to me. Yeah. jacob we love you you're not an idiot okay sorry jake you're not an idiot <laughs> I don't know. I think you're stupid with some of your choices, but whatever. It's fine. Um, He's chasing you're not an idiot. adventure. He's, cool. yeah. He's chasing adventure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm with Adam. Like, I could go out and film a Bigfoot movie. Shit, I wrote a book about it, right? Eyeshine, back in the day. I would yep. go f- make the movie to tell the story. 
But I would not go out there searching You're for You're just Bigfoot. jealous because you don't have balls big enough like right. that. Right. And I don't like need them. I don't need those kind of size of balls. They're too big. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> Fuck Bigfoot. <laughs> Can't do it. Anyway. Uh, Adam. Okay. What what well, else you got in the pipeline, Somebody burned brother? something on the stove. I apologize, everybody. My oh, uh, your shit was going. I didn't oh, even hear it. I didn't hear it. No, you're fine. Okay. Um, I hear the dogs barking. I hear that too. Yeah. Um, what do you got in the pipeline, Adam? <laughs> what's going on? What what's your new newest project? What do you got? Anything rolling? Getting ready? Pre? What's yeah, up? yeah, we're working on another project. Um, Is it a full? I feature? I'm gonna go switch genres a little bit. I'm gonna get mm. kind of back into horror. Oh, um, you go there you go. Bro. I'm gonna do something. Um, you know, a little bit kind of a Stranger Things mixed with Goonies kind of a thing. Um, I love it. You I know, love all of everything you just said. Beautiful. No, uh, you know, because we, you know, I, I, I love that era with with the you know, the eighties and nineties, and yep. I feel like that we've strayed from that sort of style of filmmaking <laughs> for like you know in in in. Uh, you know, in this attempt to make everything like uber serious, yeah. yeah. You know, ever since kind of like you know the Dark Knight kind of came out, you yeah. know, every or Batman Begins, really, you know, everything sort of had this major shift towards this like real serious, like can't you know ha- have any humor, and well, some can, but you know, it's, it's it. just I don't know, it's just it, we're in this time period where I feel like you know people need fun, fun, humor, fun. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, something a little bit more lighthearted, but mm-hmm. still, you know, uh, you know, so, you know, stuff to, you know, that that's like a roller coaster ride. You yeah. know, that gets get get your adrenaline pumping, but also, you know, gives you some laughs. You yes. know, all some, the emotions, some chills and some thrills, like every everything. You know, and a lot of movies nowadays, they just I don't know, they they kind of stray from that. Some try to do it, and it you know it, it's okay. Um, but you know, you look at a movie like I don't know if you guys have seen the um, Top Gun Maverick. Oh, I love it. So like, you get a movie like that that comes out of nowhere, you know, where they make a sequel to a movie from the '80s, mm-hmm. and 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 they they do it right, perfectly, you know, and like you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, that genre does still exist. It, it will never look, lose its legs. And and look how people responded to it. Right. I had people telling me before I'd even seen it, they were like, oh my gosh, like, I haven't seen a movie like that in a long time. Yeah. And they, and they miss it. They miss that nostalgia. And they miss that. Yes, they do. I know they you do. Know? I know I do. Because everything is so generic now. Yeah. yeah. And everyone is, you know, we, I don't have to get on a tangent, but there's so many people concerned about political correctness and, and all this stuff. And it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, you want to be mindful of all that stuff. You don't want to single anybody out. You don't, purposely want to hurt anybody right. but if you just focus on the filmmaking and the storytelling the, the, the rest of it doesn't really matter that much I totally like, like, like it all kind of happens naturally yeah. when, yeah. when you know one of the problems that I see now is like you've got Disney for example that like is is like you can tell when you're watching their their new releases that they're following a checklist. They're trying yeah. to be all inclusive totally, of it, everyone. It's like Starbucks with Not their fucking offend. coffee. It's just yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, it's a I, recipe. I, re- I read an article the other day. It was on No Film School. It was about um, what was it about? It was a I can't remember what, it, what the title of it was, but it mentioned in the thing. It said that um, the Academy, Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, the people who put on the Oscars. Mm-hmm has a set of requirements for for films to be um eligible for nomination and i i read the list and i won't go through the list right now but i read the list and i was like you know it's kind of a shame that like we're singling out projects that could potentially be really good candidates yeah Yeah. well this is the thing in in order to try to be respectful of people who feel disrespected we are going the other way and now us people as creatives are feeling disrespected because we cannot do so many things because we're trying to respect these other people it's gone way too far it's out of control and it needs to be dialed back a little bit because Honestly, we all want to respect people. I mean, that's a right. no-brainer. Like, we're not trying to offend anyone. But no. so many people are so offended that it's gone way past the point of, like, it's, being okay. 
because you're so limited now as what you can say, what you can do, what you can put out there. You're afraid. Well, which is you're, you're, oh, right. go ahead. Go ahead. Adam, and please. you're always and you're always so concerned with with everything that you put out, and mm-hmm. you don't want it to be viewed a certain way or or, or taken the wrong way. And yeah. you know, anytime some of those issues gets brought up, but it's like it's hard to undo it. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. like you, as soon as you sort of get, you know, put on that list, so to speak, it, it, you know, the public just has this this perception of who you are and you can't change it. No, right. and you can be attacked by the public and be ruined, basically. And that's yes. what worries yes. like us as filmmakers is that you can actually be ruined by those people that if they're so offended or if they want to attack you and they all go for it. You can yeah. be ruined. And so that is scary. It's scary. And that's why we're careful, or we try to be anyway, to right. not offend people. But um, I think that's gone too far, personally. Yeah. But I mean, even well, in the documentary that I'm doing right now, there's a situation where these wolves I have been attacking this woman's livestock on her ranch. She's got a huge ranch. Her animals roam free. But these wolves have been attacking her livestock. And there's this whole thing about it, you know, because there's people who love wolves and want to protect them and then there's the people who it gets political and then there's the people who are like i just want my livestock to live you know Mm, i want to make a living i want to run my ranch you know so there's these two sides which are totally understandable but it gets too much you know she gets to a point where she is tied her fingers are tied her hands are tied for what she can do because she doesn't want to upset these people Mm -hmm. that will go after her or wolf lovers wolf lovers yeah. yeah Yeah. yeah. Well, so I mean, gotta, I'm an animal lover, so I totally understand that and so side is she. of it. Yeah. And so is she. Yeah. But but that's but not a, a reflection on the filmmaker. That yes. if if somebody wants to have an interpretation of of that scenario, it's really a reflection on the character, not the filmmaker. Correct. Well, true, but Correct. She you're was... making a story that 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 maybe you're trying to make a point one way or the other, but that's really the audience that, that really makes decide. that decision. They I decide. agree. Yeah, I that's totally, what's beautiful yeah, about I it. I totally agree. That's what's fun about being a documentary filmmaker, Sam, because you can actually show both sides and let people decide what they want to believe. I would or like to believe. be able right. to, but it's right. a little fearful doing it. No, it's, I'm agree. a little fearful it's doing it. It's scary. It's scary to put their point off. It, you know, the only reason I think it's scary to put their point out there is because it may differ from what you may feel as a, as a person. But well, I'm not if worried you're, about that. I'm it, worried well, about the people attacking. Well, yeah, but sure. that's not up to us. Our job is to tell the story and, and tell it the best yeah. you can, you know, in, you in, in the most hard. realistic and honest way possible to show both sides of this issue. And then people can watch it and they're entertained by it. And also it's learning. Maybe, just maybe, they might be able to communicate better because of your movie. Maybe, you never know. know. But everyone's you never dealing with know. this type of thing right now. It's Everyone great. is. Com- the comedians are dealing with it. That's what I was going to bring up. Dealing with it. Yeah. Everyone is dealing with That's it. That's why I brought comedians up a long time ago on this show. Like, I think it's fucking stupid. We had comedians on here that I almost got in a fight with on the show. Did I not? Because I totally <laughs> disagreed with what yeah. they were trying to say. Stifling people's voices like that artistically, I think it's stupid. I think it's the most dumbest thing you could possibly do because we all have a voice and we all have an artistic platform that we want to get our thoughts out comedians that that, just because you you're saying certain jokes doesn't mean that's who you are you know just because i play a badass in the movie i'm not a badass i don't know how to shoot a fucking gun right i'm trying to shoot the monsters but i mean i'm not cool like that right it's an act it's entertainment schwarzenegger does not go out and jump on a fucking helicopter in real life he doesn't (laughs) okay these are these are just comedians are comedians you know filmmakers are filmmakers storytellers are storytellers that's all we do that's our point that's what we're doing go too literal with things i I try not to worry about it yeah when it just laugh just just roll with it it's okay it's not that deep yeah adam's point is great though um you know you you got to have fun in your films and and your storytelling you have to and and stranger things does that it's it's pretty clear that's why it's a fucking hit right yeah you know our our horror verse the stuff that we're doing when we did the shape film for youtube you know we didn't think about any of that stuff we just made a michael myers fucking fan film series right and look at the views it's gotten it's great 
Yeah. And we did right. the horror verse the same way. We are going back to nostalgia just like you are, Adam, in yeah. the same regard. We're trying to save that 70s, 80s, and 90s vibe because there's mm-hmm. something that resonates there, I think. Well, with people, people respond. Yeah. They respond young, to young it. Young people so. do too. I mean, we show yeah. our kids all the time the old movies and like, Dad, that movie is great. I'm like, I know, right? And they're what, 14? Tired. They're tired <laughs> of the cancel culture bullshit. Well, it's so well, that and a lot of stuff right now is boilerplate. Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. and that's and what Adam's back, saying. Yeah, exactly. it's like sorry, I missed part of it. Trying to oh, put sorry, up on okay. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, I forgot you. We went out. Try. Yeah, that's exactly what he was talking about. It's yeah. just routine. It's just yeah. this this system that they have a checklist of things, mm-hmm. and it's uh, he's absolutely right, and you can totally see it when you're watching them. And not saying that they're not still entertaining. I still enjoy the movies. He's talking. But, he right. was talking. He started off talking about Disney movies and how mm-hmm. they have. Yeah, so that was how it kind of began. But yes. Yeah, it's it is, sad. It is sad. Yeah, it the creativity doesn't, doesn't necessarily make them bad movies, but it definitely, no. as, as somebody who notices it, it takes me out of the experience. Right, yeah. I'm with you. It does. And me when too. you notice something like that, you, you lose, you you know, you you lose something from yeah. the experience. Yeah. You know. Yep, yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. I don't care how big the budget is, you do. Right. And that's why it's more entertaining to watch some indie films sometimes, even if they're not as well made. But but at least the story is unique. It's it's new. It's fresh. You, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, there's no template there that they're using that you're used to. It, it's great. I think that's why indie films do so well still to this day, because it's the only market that you can actually see something that is a, a, a brand new type of storytelling style. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's great where we're not we're not locked in to these executives telling us what we can and can't do. It's beautiful. It's right. beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, because they're too worried about yeah. you know losing money. Yeah, exactly. Um, because, and we're just like a certain because a certain demographic disagrees kind of with like something. Me being worried and, about the wolf people coming after me if I put this movie out. Yeah. I mean, it's the same type of thing. Don't That's worry what about they it. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to. Movie. I'm, it, it, I'm not it, going it's to. It, it's it's but it is a fear. It's, and I it's not. You have a sharpshooter on your side there, Sam, who's uh, got your back. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mike. Or what? <laughs> yeah, the, the the one the who Mike, was the, yeah, the one Mike, who yeah. hunts the wolves on the yeah, ranch. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, the yeah. only person allowed to hunt the wolves on the ranch. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Adam? Oh, I was just gonna say it, it's not entirely different from like if you made a movie where you, the point of maybe the movie or the character was to show, you know, a certain side of people. Yeah. You know, maybe it'd be hatred or racism or whatever yeah that maybe that's the point yeah. and right. do we not show these things do we not include these things in our and in our and our filmmaking because we don't want to stir up the pot or you, you know because i feel like if you if we go down that road too far and we start pulling all these these things away from history basically mm-hmm. then we forget where we've come from and we sort of forget the progress we've made and to show you know people like hey listen this wasn't okay but you need to know about it Mm -hmm. yep right yeah it's 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 history let's not erase it let's 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 not celebrate it necessarily but let's remember it yeah my dad my dad back in the day my dad back in the day okay i'm I'm obviously brown hi i'm brown um (laughs) my dad's black my mom's white okay and my dad always used to tell me all the time. Anytime I'd listen to Van Halen or uh, <laughs> Iron Maiden or something like that, he would always say, hey, boy, don't forget your roots. <laughs> don't forget your roots. And that's what you're talking about. Do not forget where you come from. You know, and yeah. that as artists, we can't forget that. Like, no. there's a reason why we have this aspiration to tell stories and, and to put this shit out there and to do what we do. You know, some right. of us make money, some of us don't. That doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. How many people do we know that don't give a fuck about the money? They just want to be a part of it and make we'll share it. our life experiences. Yes, brother. In the form of stories. Yes. Yeah. And that's what it is. Don't forget the fucking roots. Make Poor, it fucking Poor I think of being so offended. Don't worry that's about it. it. <laughs> yeah. Don't not... don't listen to all the garbage. You got something to say, say it. Make your movie. That's it. Boom. Done. That's it. Move on. Make another one. Keep making them. It's fun. <sighs> Adam. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, brother. Yeah. No, great, great points. Great conversation. Yeah, dude, you're a badass, you're man. You're a great filmmaker. No, I, I, you know, there's there's something about you, dude, you, the way you were talking about, you know, respecting people and everything else. And you, and you do that. I can tell. You're, you're a very nice guy. Very cool, dude. I can totally Thanks. tell. Um, your movies are great. I love both of them that we were able to watch. We'll finish yours this weekend. Um, 
Very you just get real. to the good parts too. I like, yeah, I, like I know. The real part. I, I like know how real you are. Yeah, exactly. I think it's it's refreshing, and I I think that's what resonates on film every time. When I meet a certain filmmaker, and I know you guys agree with me, when we meet somebody who's cool, you're like, that's why his movie is good. That's it comes cool. out in their art. Absolutely. It does. It really does. And when you meet somebody who's dry, the movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Your movie did not suck, Adam. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No. And and no. if I I'm, I know where your movie was kind of going, I'm like, okay, the blackout stuff. And I was like, well, this is like two movies put together right now because right now yeah. we're in this oh, family yeah, drama. Oh, following two stories. Yeah, we're right. doing this family yeah. drama, but you, well, in, in the background, the, you know, the shit's going to happen. Well, the idea is, is by going to West Virginia, we, we kind of separate the two stories a little bit for a little while. Yeah. 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 And then at some point, they're going to come crashing back together. Yeah, because you don't forget about you. that one yeah. beginning. I mean, you don't forget. Right. It's always like, there, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but, but you're kind of like, you kind of like get sidetracked. And, and I think a lot of people, story, I yeah. think a lot of people get off put by that. They're like, well, I don't mm. understand. Like you got this scenario, but you don't act on it. And, or you don't do this. You don't do that. And we got, we've got from day one, the movie was released. We got so much hate. So much hate. Oh, about that? Yeah, it happens. About yeah. it, about all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. You know? we trust the, just it, trust Do you remember story. Choose Your Own Adventures? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's <laughs> kind of what it's like. There's a story in a story. Like, you have to be able to remember the, the what you began with. Yeah. Because you kind of connect with it later. That's but the, the reminders point, are right? there. The reminders are there. Like, she gets a full tank of gas in her Jeep. She looks at it. But the gas station, you see people freaking out, right? So you're like, so, okay. Yeah, so that's there. The cell little, phones are little clues. Yeah, yeah, the cell phones are still there's fucking up. So clues. it's yeah. reminding you this shit's about to happen. So, I mean, it's great story. If you pay attention. Yeah. And that's what's cool is yeah. that it keeps your brain going the whole time. Like, mm-hmm. you have to keep your you've got to watch it which we which talked about and you, guys, and you guys were too tired to keep up we get it well, that's <laughs> that why we did it lost finish interest. it but, yeah no we well were it's on, it's it on my we watch list for the night yeah it's it's really good chuck you're gonna yeah. like it it's yeah, good you are. it's did, super super wait, good how, i'm just curious how, how did you guys watch it i'm to be i was gonna TV? go to the oh. i was gonna go to the torrent platforms to watch it honestly oh, thanks. but <laughs> we're gonna just pirate it you know well no i was gonna say that because you know it's on um it's on Tubi. Yeah. Um, it's on Amazon. They released it on Amazon first, then Tubi, and then they put it on the YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube you ones on actually YouTube. got um, two. What is it? Two point five million views. Oh, that's beautiful. Right Good now. For you. Good for you. Good Which for you. I never thought in a million years there would be that many people that would. Yeah, that's a sit big there number. And watch it. Um, and um, so for anybody out there who kind of sneers at YouTube as a as a viable distribution option, let me tell you. I'm telling you. I love we, YouTube. You see, we, we got we got our movie paid for because of YouTube. Wait a minute, hold on. I I, I love that, Adam. What did you just say, Sam? You love YouTube? Yeah. Honey, that's why I started the Horrorverse. Okay, well, I'm not worried about what you're doing on YouTube. <laughs> I wanted to build our channel. I wanted to get it monetized. For I like that watching YouTube. That's what I was. Thinking. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, um, Adam. No, that's great. I totally agree. YouTube is the shit when it comes to monetization and and worldwide audience i mean it's right yeah. there it's right there right. right and everybody knows it yeah everybody has it they don't have to pay for it yeah, yeah. everyone's got it's, it it's great you know? it's great good yep. for you man that's great i watched we watch your movie on tubi because tubi pays us the best wait so oh, we so that's why that's the best too back. yeah so i would encourage it yeah. but yeah. you know there's options for people yeah. i think that i think the quality on tubi is better to yeah. be honest yeah um, it, youtube's compressions you know that's the technical shitty. side of me yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm with you i'm with you but um it doesn't always have to be like i like when i uh i i get like when i upload my wedding stuff to youtube like i i know the specs that youtube is looking for and as long as i follow those specs and it goes up you know 4k hdr looks fantastic yeah you yeah, know yeah but you know that's good not always the case <laughs> well super proud of you man yeah, it, it, it's been it's been a pleasure meeting you seriously you. buddy you. you're, you're dope your movies are great keep making them um fuck yeah, Chuck, you got to watch it. It's great, dude. Yeah, it's great. Watch it. yeah, it's great. Like I said, it's on the watch list for tonight. Yeah, we'll finish yeah. it tonight too. We're gonna finish it up, and yeah. I'll send. I'll send you. you th- I will. Let me know what you what you think. I will, and I, we'll give honest feedback too. We don't fuck around. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And while we're watching your stuff, yeah. make sure you jump over to YouTube and watch the horror first. You have episodes one, two, three, four, and yeah, five you to like check nostalgia, out. all right? Yeah, watch right. that and go back and watch the shape too. You like horror yeah. stuff? It's fun. Yeah, it's good. Sweet. Well, send send me a link so I can go check it out. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we got you. We can do that. Here's your link: CCC Entertainment Group on YouTube. 
<laughs> I'll send it some just, books. You know. But I'm lazy. I need something yeah. I can click. I feel you so much. <laughs> Sam like... just said that last night. We need a link tree. <laughs> he just said that, Sam. Just yeah, because we need a fucking link tree. <laughs> so people can just click on one thing and they're, woo, there's uh, all our links. Link and and this is why Adam's need. dealing with it because attention spans for people suck. They won't give them a chance to fucking watch the whole movie because they need it now, 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 now. Um, well, damn it. Are you talking shit about us because we didn't finish the movie or... No, no, not us. Oh. No, I'm just talking in general. Like Adam no, said, he got a lot of hate because oh, yeah. of the storyline. But if you, can you just invest you an attention. hour and 59 minutes to watch Don't get the on film? your phone and pay attention. Yes. That's all right. it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. It takes it takes 50 pages to get into a story in a book. Give us a few minutes in a movie. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Some people, people, it's people like three minutes. Oh, this sucks. Yeah. They're, done. They're done. Yeah. I know. They're yep. just, just, and you know you see it, too. Shit. Even on the algorithm on YouTube, you see like 50 seconds. Oh, yeah, you can see, you can see it. Yep. <laughs> you, it's always after, hovering around 30 three, to... Three minutes. <laughs> yep, yep. And then yeah. it's about 30 to 40% of the people still hang in there. You know, that's where you're usually yep. out. And that's that's fine. Can you wait a minute? Yeah. It's, uh, and that's, that's your crowd. That's your, that's that's your, your audience. Base. And you I love right I away. love those fuckers. Those, that's the audience right there. Those fuckers that hang in there. And those are the ones that comment when you get comments yeah. at the end of the films on YouTube. Yeah, those are the ones that say stuff. You know, but the ones that don't, that Fuck just em. pushes you to challenge yourself to get them, wrap them in right away. I to want grab to. Them, grab them right I away. I kind of want challenge. to, but then I kind of don't. <laughs> I'm a rebel. I'm fucking rebel. Oh, <laughs> right. You don't want to watch it? Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. You can't keep saying that. They'll stop watching everything. <laughs> it's true. It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chuck, you want to close the show out, my man? Oh, Adam, thank you for joining us today on Around the Real. Thank you for joining us for a cup of coffee because it's still fucking morning. I had some a for <laughs> No one. Um, no, uh, everybody go check out um, The Other Side of Darkness. Available now on 2B TV, um, Amazon Prime, and YouTube. And yes, go to 2B TV because it's still fucking July. And 2B right now is still everybody making everybody the most amount of money possible. And that's what's important is making fucking money because God knows you're not going to get shit from Hollywood for a while. So come support us independent fuckers trying to make a little bit of a living or at least a side hustle or maybe just to cover keeping the lights on. Otherwise, we'll all end up on the other side of darkness. Everybody have to remember, think hard because you're fucking thinking anyway. We'll see everybody later. Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs> For those of you that want to be a guest on Around the Real, please email Sam at aroundthereal253 at gmail.com. That's aroundthereal253 at gmail.com. Not Messenger. Do not message Aaron on Messenger because then he has to send you a message that says email Sam at aroundthereal253 at gmail.com. That's aroundthereal253 at gmail.com. How come they can't just message me again? Because nobody wants to fucking talk to you. Can anybody reach out that's an artist, filmmaker, actor? If you're an artist of any kind, we want to hear from you. But we are going to vet the crap out of you. We don't care if you make millions of dollars in Hollywood or if you're just beginning your career in the art industry. We don't care. So everybody that wants to be on Around the Real, yes, we want you. That's Around the Real 253 at gmail.com.